Um, hello. I have to apologize to our foreign guests because I have no time to translate, translate my uh, presentation. Um, and I think I, I'm not able now to talk in English for all presentation, but I will happy to answer your questions after my talk. Um, so, um, but I try to translate the first slide. Уважаемые коллеги, уважаемые председатели комиссии. Dear colleagues, dear chairpersons, I would like to present for your attention the methods of molecular biology and detection of bone marrow contamination and minimal residual disease in neuroblastoma patients. Neuroblastoma is frequently met solid malignant mass in little children. Researchers have been studying the biology of this uh, tumor um, due to its peculiarities. On the one hand, it can spontaneously regress, but on the other hand, uh, it can aggressively grow uncontrollably. By the same token, in neuroblastoma, oftentimes we see the contamination of bone marrow uh, by tumor cells, which is the criterion for staging the disease and each the subject of studying by a number of authors. Uh, uh, classical molecular diagnostic markers in neuroblastoma for chromosome aberrations such as deletion of chromosome 1, short key, and uh, MIC gene amplification. Such a source method of diagnostics of those aberrations is FISH method, citogenetics, first of all, but FISH uh, has got some disadvantages. Uh, first of all, uh, it is possible to identify it only in bone marrow using this methodology in case the tumor has got these aberrations. And second thing, which limits and confines uh, this method application, it is sensitivity, which is comparable to morphological studies of bone marrow. Uh, mindful of that, Many authors uh, are requests for more specific and sensitive markers to diagnose minimal, di minimally disseminated disease in neuroblastoma using PCR, first of all, real-time PCR, and uh, uh, if authors allow me, I'll uh, show one picture why several markers uh, are more preferable in diagnosis of minimally disseminated disease uh, in neuroblastoma rather than one selective gene. We selected a panel of three genes, TH, Foxtabine, and DCX. All the three genes uh, have got high expression in neural system cells, uh, so they are quite specific uh, for neuroblastoma tumor cells. Its reference gene, it was capture uh, gene, which is expressed intensively in all the tissues of the organism. Uh, patients we tested uh, uh, were the patients or Rogachev Medical Oncological Center they had been through the treatment between 2014 and 2017. The material was the aspiration of bone marrow taken from uh, four uh, uh, different uh, bones. And also, we did the study of the tumor tissue. Here is the staging and distribution uh, in the stages. Uh, and we used the uh, patients with OLF, which are, were in molecular genetic remission at the moment of uh, studies and uh, this uh, system means that we work with matrix RNA uh, so we took that into account in designing primers we were developing the specificity of selected primers on the tumor tissue first stage was uh, uh, setting up real-time uh, simulation, a real-time PCR, and on the results of this PCR, we could see uh, that our sample contains uh, 
uh, the expression of target target genes or we didn't find it in comparison versus control group we were convinced that all the markers we selected are specific for neuroblastoma cells because in control group uh, uh, the expression of selected genes uh, uh, exclusive of TAG gene was not observed, but even based on TAG gene in the samples which were positive in expression gene, a TAG gene was much higher than in control group. The next stage, we decided to introduce calibrators in, to our system in order to have quantitative assessment of the result of expression. As calibrators, we use vector plasmide, uh, uh, plasmide and concentration uh, of targeted gene, target gene. That way, we obtain calibration curve uh, in relation to which we are calculating the values in our samples. Uh, why was it so important for us to make this calibration? It's common knowledge that when we're talking with the pa about the patients which were initially positive on a minimally disseminated disease, and we identified residual expression of target genes at the moment of the end of the treatment, uh, that is not very good situation uh, clinically wise. But if we look, take a closer look at the group of patients which by the end of the treatment didn't have the expression of target genes, uh, in point of fact, we see entirely different uh, options of the situation in which moment uh, that expression was not uh, identifiable anymore. And those differences between those options of the dynamics of the reduction of expression of target genes at the end of the day may, might be very critical in assessment of patient survival in these groups or their uh, life quality subsequently. The recalculation using calibrators of our the recalculation of our samples uh, uh, identified the challenge we encountered for. Uh, you may not see it here, unfortunately, but there were some uh, samples which could be detected uh, using PCR, real time PCR, but as to calculation along the calibration curve, we cannot do that because. It's a very low expression, uh, and our method falls flat. It does not allow us to do that. In this case, we decided to refer to the third method. Uh, it's the third stage uh, digital droplet PCR, which is all about the fact that oil emulsion, uh, uh, we add out all the potential, all the components to this primer, uh, sounds, probes, primaries, uh, and we obtain droplets. Uh, and by probability theory, it contains one target molecule and all the necessary components for PCR. That way, PCR is uh, conducted independently in each and every droplet. The detection subsequently envisages methodology very much akin to flow cytometry, when in each and every droplet we can detect the availability of fluorescence or its absence. Uh, looks like this. We obtain positive droplets and droplets uh, without PCR. Uh, that way we can not look at the calibrator, but we can uh, numerically calculate uh, the number of uh, targets of target gene which we have in the source sample. In order to retain sensitivity comparable to the one of PCR in real time online, we make triplets. Uh, on the average, it's about 45,000 droplets uh, uh, total per one sample we get, and we don't lose sensitivity in methodology. Theoretically, of course, we can increase this sensitivity uh, a lot. But there are two limiting factors: is the volume of the sample for such a number of uh, PCRs, and second factor, we can uh, identify something which is not clinical significant. So the uh, the actual feasibility of increasing this sensibility is rather dubious here. 
uh, having got all those above mentioned methodologies and techniques, we developed the optimal scheme schematic for monitoring of neuroblastoma patients, uh, whereby depending on the risk stage uh, uh, or the availability or absence initially detected minimally disseminated disease, we study patients via digital PCR or PCR, uh, real-time PCR, uh, as the example of the high-risk group, a small cohort of patients who studied. I would like to demonstrate to you uh, some bottlenecks in this diagnosis which I would like to emphasize for future. Uh, initially, positive minimally disseminated disease not always entails patient's death. And moreover, even the residual minimally disseminated disease after the end of uh, therapeutic treatment, nonetheless, in a number of cases, uh, means that we have to follow up those patients. Major uh, issues which are important for us and what we do in our lab, whether there is a correlation between positively and minimally disseminated disease to regression or progression of the disease in the dynamics of uh, the follow-up. And also, uh, in more details, we should uh, study that group of patients which does have a multi uh, positive uh, status after the end of treatment, but nonetheless, it's, it's got different dynamics in achieving this um, clear genetic uh, frequency uh, of uh, the um, bone marrow. And we increased uh, drastically our technical capability to detect minimal uh, residual disease in neuroblastoma stage, uh, patients when we use PCR, especially in cases when uh, the expression identified by PCR in real time is higher than the critical cycle of uh, 30 CT. A digital PCR, according to our uh, opinion, is a more precise and method to calculate the uh, burden of target uh, gene in a bone marrow. And uh, subsequently in future, of course, uh, uh, we would like to apply those methodologies in clinical practice because this uh, clinical trend is not over. Now we have been processing clinical data on this uh, sample. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Varvara. We have got several questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have got a brief question, although you almost answered it by one of the slides. Correct me if I'm wrong. You had one slide. You've shown it. Some patients, after the completion of the therapy, you identify those patients and some patients which do not demonstrate those genes after therapy, but then they are decreased by third and fourth course of the chemotherapy. And let's say there was tumor, then it was disappeared, or there was the tumor, then you had you removed it, or there are metastases. Now we are streamlining the methodology on uh, bone marrow as uh, uh, liquid biopsy, fluid biopsy, so in future we'll also have more study uh, about this uh, malignant uh, mass. It's not a question, rather a comment. We did that in Minsk, very similar things, and we had points at the moment of the start, to start of the treatment and after second course of induction prior to surgery and, and after induction and after the completion of high-dose uh, chemotherapy. And that point, uh, which was pure op, we discarded it five years ago because when we were doing studies uh, of uh, bone marrow during the surgery, uh, it falsely increased uh, the amount of DNA in bone marrow, which was not correlating with clinical data. So not to have more anesthesia on a child. After the surgery, we studied uh, the bone marrow, which brought us to false positives, false results. We had very high levels of 
versions of Cherry Z and Fox to be because of that manipulation. Thank you for the comment. It's very, very valuable indeed. Thank you. Um, I think your data are very nice and very, very promising. Uh, are there any um, uh, um, ideas or are you going to study this in a multi-center uh, study? Uh, is there a Russian initiative going on? Because in Minsk they're also looking. So in the, is there any plan about, because we teamed up with, with Germany because we are small and I think Russia is a really big country, many patients. Yes, thank you very much for your question. Actually, we are planning to um, summary uh, our um, investigation with Ekaterinburg, uh, some patients retrospectively uh, for now, but uh, in future maybe it will be uh, some prospective study we'll, with uh, other centers maybe. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would encourage that, I would applaud that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, one more question, Lika. A really nice talk. Um, maybe I missed it with the translation, but um, so d d what do you do with the patients who have high infiltration? Because then I think DDPCR would not be able to quantify that really well. Uh, yes, with the high infiltration, we decide to um, to choose um, real-time PCR actually because we have not. Uh, we, it's not. A, when to choose the DD PCR in these patients. So. And, and when do you decide that you, which PCR you're going to use? Do you test them first with, Q, with the R? QPCR, of and course. Then? Firstly, all patients tested yeah. with the QPCR. And um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, so <laughs> this slide, uh, because yeah. um, if uh, we uh, see some questionable uh, re results, uh, we decide to use uh, DD PCR mm -hmm. and uh, in dynamics too. Uh, so, if a uh, patient initially was questionable results and we uh, choose to this patient DDPCR, we still observe him uh, by DDPCR only. Okay. This strategy. Did you also establish your thresholds with the DDPCR? Mm, yes, yeah. we are studying it now uh, to donors, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be really yes. interesting yes. to Thank see you. the results. Thank you. Thank you.